My guest for the morning is James Apietu Ankra, a former member of parliament for Lower West Achim. And uh, I'm privileged to have you, sir. Thank you. Very okay. Very well. And I also have the member of, um, uh, no, the parliamentary candidate of the NDC in Obwase West. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And he's the deputy minister for uh, gender, children, and social protection. Right. I'm right. Yes, you are very right. Okay. John Alexander Akum mm -hmm. is in the studio. Thanks for joining me. Yeah. He's one political commentator <laughs> I love very much. And he may not have done political <laughs> communication, but he's good at what he does. And um, how was your primary? Uh, to me, it was not hectic, but in terms of the fight, it was so close. Uh, other factors uh, contributed. How many votes did you win by? Uh, it was uh, no less than 100. Oh, okay. Less than 100. Uh, how to take it cool? Other factors work. My colleague is even complaining still, but I don't want to. Oh, it. he's complaining. Mm. You stole the election? So he claims. So he I, I was not even on the ground. I just uh -huh. voted and left. Uh, uh -huh. My school was a better disputed anniversary of Wasa Tech. Okay, so you had to go? Uh, yes, I was there throughout. I voted. Because you thought it was school chop. You had put every machine. No, really. What would you do? If you go to Manita, yeah. you are just going to ask them, how is it going? Mm -hmm. And then you live there. You don't be in any business. And what? Can come, can come. <laughs> Let me read a comment. And I, this met, I had not met some of my uh, mates for a long time. And you got to meet them at the And event. I met them that and day. And you were happy though. Wow. Because at the end of the day, you are reflecting over this because you won the seat. You won the, the, the No, actually, too. I've always been cool. All right. I know yes. you, I know you. Mm. Let me read this very post. You didn't state your name though. So, government created a power ministry which, in my view, has not created much to addressing the power problem. Another example of bad decision on the part of government. All right. I'm reading this because we're being told that our badge is in the waters of Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, we'll be here tomorrow. Is that the case, sir? Eh? I've also read the same. Oh, okay. But I'm not interested in Cote d'Ivoire. I'm interested in the final destination of the badge. So I've not been interested in the following. I've been interested in what, where it was destined to be. So all the news about Cote d'Ivoire, those is relevance. It should be where it should be. And that is Ghana. And then we talk about uh, turning it up and producing power. Mm. Mm. Now, Uncle James, I've been asking him because, interestingly, we've been, for those of us in Accra and beyond, we've been experiencing consistent outages for the last couple of days. Yes, sure, yes. And it's, it's a worry for many of us. But it's also because... Following that, there's been a banter between the Ghana Gas Company and okay. the Ministry of Power. Oh. Seem to leave a lot of us very much confused. Sure, sure. Uh, we, one would have thought that there would have been some synchronization of, you know, the uh, communication, the, the communication mm. as to exactly what is happening. And before one party issues out a statement, you would have consulted with the other, to say, look, this is uh, what he said. So he says, okay, go ahead, and this is what we think would be happening, you know, within the period. But when you have a whole ministry issuing, the, and then the gas power communication director also comes, they say, no, no, that's not the issue. Then, less than 24 hours, the managing director, the chief executive of this also comes to sort of polish up what the communication director also, you know, it, it, it creates a little bit of, of, of a problem. In fact, I would have thought that Dr. Sipayanki, what He's come to see that, oh, next week, uh, I would not uh, if for anything at all, I would have said, look, give us some two weeks. Even if you knew that next week there was going to be an additional power, I would have added another week so that, you know, it takes care of. If it comes, fine, people who will be clapping for it. Oh, the, the guy said two weeks, but within one week, this thing had been. Now you go and say one week. So next week, people are very expectant. That's if it a, doesn't happen. That's exactly my view. That is, Simple, it doesn't you are happen, adding on. The process of adding on 250 involves a little bit of stepping down and coming up. Ghanaians are interested in how the eventual results. So if it's going to take two weeks for you to put it together and produce 250 more, why should that become an issue? Because the gas is not exactly, exactly going up because uh, it doesn't have the resources and the power to do it. Absolutely. It's only absorbing the new intake sure. to tune and be aligned. So why should that in itself create a problem? So definitely the communication gap affected the system So as soon as the slightest, they like you, said, you run into problems. People are expectant to very, go very through the situations. Yes. So for the sake of what we've gone through, the management is that let's put one week, week on, top on top and get the flexibility of the arrangement. Mm. Even in engineering sense, when you tune in, 
there are tests. Right. And other factors may also come to play. So at last, uh, Ghanaians will not cry for this one week. In fact, if you are not even said it, they know they are already oh, really in it. Neat. And a lot of a sudden, in two weeks, we have our power. Power. So the management has been very, very, very wrong. It, 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 it's uh, sometimes just a little restraint and trying to make checks with each other will help, right? Sure. So that we're all, it's not as if we're not used to the difficulty. We're used to. So yeah. it's just a communication that should have, should have been Yes. Right. You know, in this world, even policies, Every single policy of government is cross-sectorial. You cannot implement it. It affects it most of the ministries. Yes. So to let it work, there should be total collaboration. And in this wise, it is not ECG alone. It is not uh, Ghana Gas. It is not uh, VRA. VRA. It is totality of the production. Okay. Mm. So why shouldn't there have been that collaboration to come out of a single mm. position? That would have been great. Mm. You took part in the primaries, and earlier on I asked you about the primaries, but we have defeated member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram being reported across the media, E.T. Mensa, saying that it is possible that Sam George, that is Sam George, who is the one who has been elected as the parliamentary candidate for the NDC Ningo Pram Pram, may have rigged that very election. Well, since that you also seem to be having that rumor lurking around your neck. Um, you could also perhaps share your own independent or neutral observations about some of these things. Well, I have views, but because that's ended, I want everything to end. So I wouldn't want to go into it. The party cohesion becomes more important after the elections. So I think it's very important. But for UT, I have various steps. Let's handle it without UT and without uh, Sam George for a start. And look at the fortunes of NDC in the Gunungo Pram Pram constituency. And for the last elections, NDC had uh, 50, uh, 54 or something yes, percent, yes. as against MPP 40 percent, the highest ever by MPP. And it was coming down gradually. Mm -hmm. So obviously, if you make the decision without recourse to the individuals, you realize there are issues the party will need to handle. Now, Sam George comes into the fray. Sam George is a small boy or a son to uh, Yeti mm -hmm. Mensa. And then issues start flaring up. Most of us from outside the constituency knew it was not going to be an easy fight for Yiti, even before then. Okay. So having come this far, Yiti has a lot of experience, is more respected, he's been in the game for a long time. Unfortunately, justification for Yiti, even saying that he has been rigged, also will not be trusted by most people, looking at who he is, a, grand, a grassroots person, a person who's been in the election business for a long time. So people with that record may immediately say that, no, this man is crying foul for nothing. So I would advise that because of his very background, length of experience, and the fact that he's there with a small boy of his, he should let sleeping dogs lie. He's seeking for the apology. I think the apology should go through because it's a matter of pride. So he should take that one and then let it lie and then save a huge image he has already. I think it will help a lot than going through this process. Mm, interesting. It's a political business, but only that now his profitability levels are reduced. Uh, his competitors' profitability levels have increased. Yes, that's business. That's yeah. how it is. No, is it, it, how does it feel in, in the state when you're a stakeholder, a big stakeholder, uh, you, you have a certain aura around you and, and then you just uh, tumble? Uh, how, how does it feel? Yes, I, 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 I had a little bit of a problem with my friend. I mean, it means uh, I was with him on the African Parliamentary Union. You know, I had traveled with him. Oh, you were? Yes. Morocco, uh, Burundi, Uganda, and uh, I thought that the idea is that look, you get down the stage when the club is loudest. When you're on the stage on the podium, when you do it, when <coughs> excuse me, when the uh, club is loudest, you you get down. When you stay home, mm, you want to drink water. Oh, feel free and drink water. <laughs> That's just I was just signaling to you. When you it's stay, a live program, so we can't do anything about someone. When you stay home, any more longer, you run into problems. You will run into problems, and that's where uh, minister was saying that look, if you're left with some dignity, you better hold on to it, and then. When quietly. did he come into office? Uh, 96. Oh, but that's not too long, for God's no, sake. That's not even 20 years. It is position. You remember that Yeti was a Akramayo. 
in the field this time. He's been a pre and yes, yes, he's been on. I had known him. Yeah. I was the he's life, an old guru. I was the life manager of SIC. And we were running the University of Ghana Superannuation Scheme. And he was the Working one between the uh, University of Ghana account clerk, accounts. Was. So he was the one he who was, was dealing with coming to us. So I had known him when I got to parliament and he saw me. He told him, but I, this man has been a big man a long time ago. So he's not at parliament that is there. So uh, I, I believe that, like he's saying, he's been a mayor, the longest serving sports minister, if I'm, I'm right, the longest serving. And then achieve sports. Achieve and, and, and yes, and yeah, whatever he's done, he's, he's done so much. So if when you get to a certain way, you ought to be uh, uh, assessing the situation and getting there. Unlike Honorable Bagby, who had some of his colleagues even going over to his place from the, the, the other side of the divide to sort of plead with his constituents to keep him there. He didn't have that kind. So it meant that uh, the, it, it wasn't. Uh, you know, on the same scale, even though, yeah, maybe our senior members of parliament, but it looked like Babi had some, uh, uh, as it were, uh, support from parliament, not from just NDC. Just to let you go into that, but even Babi's issue was saved by the division of the constituency during the last uh, 2012. <sighs> When it was one, the agitations was coming very strongly. Mm -hmm. Even now, it was, it's still coming. Yeah, that's why he said he had to get some evidence of support. Yes. So when it was divided, it could down a little bit. It would have been bigger if, if it, 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 was, it, it, was, it was not divided. Okay. Yes. So what I'm saying is that I would go with what uh, Minister Akon was saying, that he should let sleeping dogs lie. He's still a senior member of the party. And you know, if it's the apology, yes, I mean, a lot of people who are not in the NDC didn't like the way Sam George went about some of these things, because whatever you do, you will need the support of E.T. Mensah in that constituency. No, oh, who said? No way. Uh, but at the end of the day, why is that, uh, how, how do you parties tend to go about some of these things? For example, there are grievances, grievances all around, mm -hmm. from Ashaiman to places, yeah. to Nungo Pram Pram, etc. How, 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 should the parties be how do you deal with it the post election normally yeah. what is done is that you get a, a reconciliation committee to look at some of this and then the flag bearer in their case being the president should have a way of meeting with both the losers and the winners and then you have a tete a tete talk of course i mean in this business Pressures go up, right? So, in, in fact, the, the uh, days preceding that it, it's very hard. People might not even listen, but after some 48 hours there about, people start cooling down and reflecting that at the end of the day, the party is supreme. As a party, do you have the mechanisms? Oh, they do, they do. But the important thing is that even before you go to elections, some of the issues are just advisory. It's an appeal because you may not have committed any offense, but they look at fortunes and advise you. My decision will still remain yours. Yes. And even in the winning side, you would have been a victim, yet mm. you won. But for the sake of mm. party, you also do want to smoke the fires. Yeah. And then magnanimously, you give up, and then we all move together. That's the way it should be. More particularly, there are like issues people are going to call, uh, complain, which are so grips. I mean, a lot of them happen. But just take it on board. It's a, a matter of assimilating an immediate cause of the defeat and trying to let you yeah. be known. And let me chip in this thing. At times, it is not even the candidate himself. Yes. It's rather yes. the supporters. Oh, oh really? The, oh, sure. Oh. Oh. They will put a lot of pressure. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. No, don't, don't accept it. You know what happened? In the president's no vote, in a particular constituency, I know, Ashanti Rodin, the two candidates, one is a chief executive, and the one who's contesting her said that he wants the chief executive to be removed. And as a protest, her the area of her, she said they should vote no, so the president will know that, that the guy is, is no good. Is, is no, there are so many things to go do. That, that, that go into it. Okay, yes. but talking about MP ship and etc., we have to yes. go to parliament because there are concerns, especially from uh, the majority leadership in parliament, that uh, plans by the, there are plans by the minority to thwart government business uh, because the president uh, stood on a political uh, podium and accused the minority of sleeping on the job. Well, he didn't particularly say that. He was in a sarcastic comment. He yeah. said, uh, because he's incessantly been accused, uh, him and his government, of taking excessive loans, mm -hmm. he was asking the rhetoric, were they sleeping? 
and uh, it seems that it's playing out in the house yeah. even though the min minority leader has come out to say um, that's not true they're not getting the right call uh, honestly when I heard what the president said I also but his comments are now under scrutiny is the actions of the, the, of the members of member parliament no no so it, it is it's, it's, it's a a action and reaction isn't it it's, 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 it's an action, garbage in, garbage and, out. <laughs> it's action and reaction when I heard that he had said that because I was in parliament with him and I knew what it, that he knows exactly what goes into you know taking loans it's not the only the external loans that are loans even the, the, the local ones that do not necessarily have to go to parliament so it seriously would be unfair to tell anybody that about you parliamentarians if whether from any UMP or whatever but it, where were you asleep when we were taking the loans you know i mean it would not be fair because some of the loans do not have to go to parliament and indeed we all know that some loans did not uh, pass through parliament but be it as it may i i, I was thinking that on a second thought, which is normally done, the president could have, you know, sent some reason to the leadership, the entire, not just the uh, uh, opposition MPs, but to the leadership. Oh no, this is uh, uh, what do you call it—a uh, rally talk or something. I didn't mean any harm, you know, just to put you in there. because it became uh, uh, this one in political parlance. Ah, were you sleeping? So everybody said, ah, my MP was the president says uh, my MP goes to parliament to sleep so they felt that okay now let, let's see what and seriously if any government would not take any opposition especially the majority side you know into this because you need them and this is what a lot of you somebody was asking me that about the uh, majority they have the majority they have, so but you they can have everybody in parliament that's it what when you are doing the approvals you can't have everybody in parliament you can't have but you must have the two thirds to do business, to have your quorum, to do business. But we've overlooked it. From the NDC both. has how many? 145? 47. 47. Is it? Yes. And they don't have the quorum for it? I think ah, they do. They do. If, they do. if you get but some of them, the ministers and other things, they will, naturally, they, they, will have, they will have... And them. especially now that the primaries... Some those who have lost, uh, they will take them some time to, you know... Readjust. Uh, readjust. Even the minority is more than 100. Yes. So if for, even for the, the 108. Yes. So, so, so the, should, it, not, be should not be a problem. So the both sides, no excuse. Yes, no excuse. But now, because of the circumstances. But uh, 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 Roland. Roland, would it be fair for the president to be told by some members of parliament, generally, on the minority side, that you have taken loans which they have approved and you've done nothing with it? Can you also, can you also say that it's not fair and therefore I will not deal with parliament? Complaints, I support it if you're not happy. And likely, in terms of the statement, you put it in perspective. But then you should complain, that will no problem. But if you should culminate into uh, uh, parliamentary situations and boycott, it, it is not right. No, it's not a formal boycott. Yeah, it's not a formal boycott, but the point it's an is indirect that. They're not, they're not boycotting. <laughs> they said, they, you have the numbers to make the call. No, no, I think we should not go there because is everybody it? knows parliament. And okay. even some of you are not there, but we know it. Okay. Sometimes we go public. So, what lessons are we hearing? Uh, just, are, just are we learning to, from just, just a fast one. Sometimes mm. we go public accounts. When I was a chief executive, sat in Kumasi, Kandapa was the chairman. Yes. Akuvado was coming to Asante in this palace. And we had to wait until okay. for the whole of the afternoon to the evening for them to go and come. And when they were doing their congress, it was the same thing. The majority sat. So, that should not be played into this game at all. The point that they are not happy. Let them express their unhappiness. But it should not affect the work of parliament because. Well, they all swore the allegiance was to the state of Ghana. And then let's fight the fight in the quarters that is required. Make a protest through the leadership to the presidency and let them resolve that particular issue. Mm. But for me, it teaches me a certain lesson that you need the cooperation of all. You need it. Oh, absolutely. Very sure. Absolutely. In the parliamentary practice, they normally do a lot of cooperation. In fact, lobbying, you say? Yes, lobbying. But how do you want to sell yourself to the world? Who say they have numbers? But numbers that don't sell your country very well. If it's always a majority view that is taken, or it goes by election, the issue may not be too big. But because of differences, it will be won by vote. It is not uh, so good. You need consensus. So they need to be working themselves. Zabituan, is it not true that uh, the minorities were also part of the approvals of many of the loans? That is what expressing, I was trying, trying the, the, to... The views uh, that they express 
um, let's say when it comes to the committee of the whole and the, and the agreements come before them after they've been looked at by the various substantive committees and they make their expressions during the stage of uh, debating or, or, or perhaps the views that are contributed towards it before the approval. Right. Um, they are not necessarily views of rejection of the agreements before the committee yeah. that has also been brought before the committee of the whole, has it? Sure. You, you know what? I don't think that the issue is about taking loans. No, that, that is not the issue. The issue is but about... the value for money. That is the issue well, that the loans, the loans are, are approved only based on agreements. Sure. And the agreements in, in, in a whole also tend to capture what the intent of the loans will be used for. And so at the end of the day, the committee that even comprises sections of the minority and majority as yeah. well are very much conversant with the content of the agreement. Sure, sure. I, I understand. So if we have if we have the minority coming around and say you're taking loans and you're not making or you've chop chop, you know sometimes it's not the utterance, you chop chop the money. And we all know that let's say if you take money for a certain product, you don't chop the money. The money is disbursed to the contractor. If it's a a multilateral donor funded loan, it goes directly even sometimes to the contractor and things like that. Well it's it's the management of the loan that is the issue when you have a situation Does where the loan comes to sit in central government coffers absolutely some of them yeah it depends on which one yes yes yes, yes. some some okay you know so you go and you want to have a road done the road is done within six months you start seeing potholes on them and then you know you have uh, uh, people uh, what do you call it uh, technicians going to say ah, no this road the value and the money that has been put down as what was used for it cannot be right. That is the, the, the issue. Hmm. That is the issue. Um, unfortunately, in this case, that is not the case my brother is saying. Because all the aftermath, it is just the use of the loan. And in most of the laws in Parliament, these ones which were passed, it was by consensus. Most, most of the laws were by consensus. So you remember the case of the Kaswa one? Remember the all the that were made? The president even said that we shall take a youth for the purpose. But what came out strongly, and what was supported by a uh, uh, was the, 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 the fact that member. people did not even go into the details of the loan. How many flyovers is there? What has been done in Kaswa town? That Johnny rose the market and all those things were not gone into. So the point is that there were criticism, but they were more political than the reality. Now, when it comes to that, everybody has an assumption. So we should do the normal George Orion and criticism. But so, you're saying it shouldn't affect parliamentary practice? No, not at all. At all. But expression, let's continue to do that. Let's continue. Mm. Hmm. It's interesting. Politics and the way we conduct politics in our country. Uh, we know that just in the early hours of Monday, we heard that there'd been a raid in the offices of the new patriotic party and initially according to the news reports um there was a group or there were group there were groups of people who had evaded the office in armed military attire accompanied by um a vehicle that belonged to the police and another one that also belonged to the mili military well, that verification has also been very much murky but following that arrests have been made by the police and it's now coming out there's been some contradictions as far as what the narrations are coming from because there are narrations according to what the report were calling from joining you says on the charge sheet presented by the police prosecuting the 11 mem mpp members who were arrested after raiding their party's headquarters at dawn on monday while the police say they arrested the mpp supporters in red t-shirt the leader of the arrested party say they were in military uniforms at the time of the arrest last monday they were granted bail by a secured court in Accra, and um, the suspect also include uh, a woman. All right. <laughs> what do you mean? This one is general. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, let's go general. Yes. You realize that normally for your opponent, you don't create it, but all the issues happen behind the bar, uh, behind it. You you may be happy, you may. But obviously, when it gets to a particular point, you all become very disturbed because it's an unending business. It should not happen to the party. What is happening? And if you look at all these stories, the leader is known. 
and the whole circumstance of boarding VIP bus from some distance, ten o'clock through Three circle, in. eating and going mm. there. It's all not, not 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 good for the party, not good for democracy. Unfortunately, instead of looking at the conservative, the issues that are culminating to that, they are looking at military. Meanwhile, the scripture says military people were what do they call it? Unfit, unfit to oversight some military for which is not the case at all. So I think that there is a basic issue to this one, and that's all the fight between Apoku and the leadership and things like that. I think there should be an end to it, through whatever means, I don't know. Otherwise, these things are going to disturb the stability of this country. It's, it's, it's a bit of a problem. One stage to the other. They say uh, there's calmness after the storm. Unfortunately, you are still not getting the calmness. There should be a solution. It's still stormy. That's my, it's still stormy. That and my up. trouble is that always, when the issue comes up, it doesn't take those on the background. It's a higher person who will further market, market the situation. What do you mean? Dr. Amakotomo. Mm -hmm. He even came and said anybody who invades the place should be shot and things like that. Let's go for solution. Let's go for solution. It is just not right. Things are just not right. Mm -hmm. Remember, even the Kobe Japan went there to help resolve issues. He was hooted at. So we should overcome. And I don't know what mechanism you have to overcome that situation. But obviously, from afar, it is just not good for the party in Ghana. Is it more of a criminal issue or is it because the internal issues of the party are not being resolved adequately? You see, Roland, uh, we have seen political, uh, as it were, bickerings and other things. I mean, it's happening, uh, at least the major parties, where people have disagreed, eventually they even decided to go and form uh, their own parties. Uh, that one, I would take it. But for umpteen times I've heard the military issuing out, and I had seen somebody being virtually stripped naked because he was wearing uh, military this thing. They've warned all of us that you should not, if you are not a serving uh, a military, wear military uniform. So for me, it's, it's very dangerous. It could happen to anybody. Minister could be as if somebody can fake and go and uh, uh, tell the bodyguard, oh, where are there a police uniform or a military? I'm from so so and so and I'm this. Before you say Jack, he's got a entry into the, the minister's house and anything can happen. That is where my worry is that if previously we didn't know, now one of the, the leader says, yes, we were military and that we are ex servicemen. I thought that there are rules and uh, regulations and laws in this country which says that when you are an ex military officer, you will not be, you are not allowed to wear your uniform and go out and do anything. So apart from the thing being political, we should look at the other side of it. Now if we don't take care, we're going to maybe have a, a, a bigger issue during the 2016 uh, elections where people who have not been sent by any of the parties just want to do their own thing. For instance, I was alluding to this, we are having primaries within a party. And we were told somewhere in the north, somebody went on a motorbike to collect the ballot box. At this age, when we've told everybody, snatching of ballot box is an offense. Illegal. It's illegal. And somebody will do it, even within... Uh, uh, so you're saying that it's something that we need to remove from our body politics? Seriously. And I think that the military high command should do something. Mm. That, look, because people were even saying they were military members, this man had come to confess that they are not. That brings to mind a post I was reading. There's a story I was reading that uh, has been attributed to uh, Kweku Bako, the managing news editor of um, the Crusading Guide, or the new Crusading Guide, who says that the military and the other security agencies need really to come and clear their name on this very subject. Well, I think from what he's saying, he says that the retired... Well, we do understand the peculiar situation of the MPP, but, but the point is, if uh, military fatigues were used, uh, yes. we, we're told that guns, uh, sub-machine guns and things like that, I mean, where do they, apart from the military, nobody imports some of these things <laughs> to any other agency. Let's not run away from the fact that there are guns in the system. Let's not run away. I mean, all. that's true. The Commission on Small Arms has stated, has stated we have over it. 2 million guns in, in our the, system. Yes, yeah. yes. So it is not a, a, a case of the military. They've spoken, but we should get to the bottom to, of yeah. the matter. Who recruited them? You only know a leader. Who recruited them? And for what purpose oh. did they invade? So you're saying they can't do this in isolation? At all. At all. They have come to say, and likely they've been created by the leader. They are not there. Who are? 
you know the bail, the bail condition they gave them? The situation was that they, they were said there were four to one others who have gone away. And therefore, if you keep the 11 behind bars, they will not influence anything. Other what happens to the fourth one who were part of the team? And therefore, it is safe to give them the bail. While the police were talking about how they should be kept and to be asked various questions. So it's something we should all be interested to get to the bottom. But I think beyond that, the party should overcome its internal problem. It is not going away. You see, Minister, that one is true. But the thing had moved to a certain level. We ought to be careful as, as a country that if within the Nipah, people can go and use military... Well, we do understand that. But the point is that... Uh, is it not because the genesis of the whole thing is, is, is a disagreement that has not been resolved? No, but so if you don't... Uh, disagreement. No, we can do a, the prosecution, go, but, but... No, no, no. That, that's not even just prosecuting. But to, to have a disincentive for people... To go and use that for me, it's, it's a very dangerous situation that we are looking at. We are perhaps looking at just an MPP, which fine is right, but that if people can have access to Camu, and it, it could be done to any ordinary citizen, not just a party matter. Just not just a party matter, like people are doing. The armed robbers, they say, and they have a police uniform or something. They stop you. And you don't know, you stop before you realize they are not using it. So why, why is it that the security agencies, and I have to ask you, tend yes. to find it very difficult prosecuting perpetrators of crimes who are mainstream political party people? Perhaps. Uh, it's because is, they don't want to be tagged? It's the infiltration that politics has done into these institutions. For me, that, I think that, that, that is the way. The, the, yes, but in fact, the a former. VRA chief executive yesterday, I read some posts saying that uh, the problems that we're having with all these rules of matter is because, I mean, uh, government upon government sort of had their hands into the energy uh, issue. PURC are not able to uh, do their work because uh, governments sort of dictate to them. And so, uh, Roland, for me, <laughs> that is that is the. Uh, you issue. realize that even for the judiciary, we have our laws. But they will even recognize party constitution and say that go and exhaust internal mechanisms before you come. It doesn't take away their jurisdiction. But they think that it's more peaceful respecting that order and letting it influence the generality of this country. Why? Because they think that in political situations, if it's not well handled, there might be an overflow. Where somebody may judge that it's a political issue, you have judged it before. Is it because of precedent? Well, I cannot tell. You know that, I, I, you know that in law... I, if I, if I'm I don't think it's it only politics. It, 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 Even it, it, in the Methodist Church, if you're a priest in the, and there are regulations, or for that matter, or whatever, and there's something that you go to court, they, they, if you haven't exhausted what the Methodist or the Presbyterian or the Catholic says, they will ask you to go back and do you know, that before you, know, you come. Law will always take care of the eventual damage resulting from a particular yeah. issue. And if particularly the country is going to lose out, having done a good judgment, they will reconsider how to pass that judgment. So other factors come to mitigate normal situations. But if it's coming too much and we are concerned, some actions need to be taken. That is why we have alternative dispute resolution in the judicial um, system, seeking remedies for some of the issues. But uh, how do we resolve the problems that, uh, um, i.e., between a focal the suspended uh, chairman uh, and also the entire party, the difficulties they have already. There's a, there are post indications in the media um, that are linking a certain removal of the general secretary and also the, is it the second national vice chairperson of the, the party? Crap, the crap, the crap. Well, uh, for me, it's, it's the bottom line is that everybody should respect the constitution of the, of the party so that nobody feels bigger than the, the organization that is the party. No one individual should, whether you're the flag bearer, you are whatever, you are, you are first and foremost. Because you're saying the party is supreme. Sure. And this constitution is supreme. It's supreme. So you are first and foremost a member before, and that it is a voluntary organization. If you feel too bad about it, for me, it gets to a point where you say, well, enough is enough. I came uh, voluntarily to join the, uh, uh, the organization. So I, I, I want to leave, go. And if, if I have a, a clout and I think that I can form a, 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 a party which might be stronger and this is like that, I'll, I'll get out and go and do that.
Is that the case? Is that the case, Minister? Unfortunately, some of us may do that, but others will insist that history has it in abundance of those who stood for what they thought is right and therefore were able to change the course of action in various countries. So some will give up. Others, because they think that the same constitution we are saying is flouted, he will just continue to pursue it. Just that the other point is that there should be a civil way of pursuing the case. That's all. There should not be any violence. But somehow, I, I, I will easily give you. Let's take the current scenario in which um, Paul Afoko says he's going to court. Has he had it to court already? No, not yet. Uh, oh, okay. I thought I heard it. They said okay. last Friday he would have, but it's not been reported okay. whether he's Gone found. Okay. Okay. Let's take the current scenario in which Paul Afoko has great difficulties with the way in which he was suspended and feels that, well, it, it, it didn't accord, go according to the regulations or the tenets of the, con of, of the party's constitution. How do we resolve such situations you see that when somebody is so adamant? You see, immediately there are two very hot contending issues of top people. Paul Afoko and his group say, no, we disagree with the processes. It was abused. I want to go to court. We will normally will say that, okay, go to court, go to court, go to court. Some will also say that, no. But even now, granted, granted, in the event that the court should give relief to him, implementing it will be very difficult. Because he doesn't have... Moral and physical consensus on the ground. Exactly. Consensus. Not that it's wrong if it is judged. Okay. So people in the party who are the leaders should look at the issue that if even it goes to court, win or lose, it is all good. So how do we then do something about the situation? And more particularly saying that, uh, my brother, if you go to court and you win, it will be difficult to get you back. So let's go for the right solution, which are the remedies. How can we make it easy for somebody to accept the situation and say, I'm sacrificing, let it go? There should be a lot of talk behind the scenes. Mm. A lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. Now, I'm not, you want to come in, eh? Yes, yeah, sure. You are a member of the National Council. Yes. So I don't want you to be answering me because it then compromises your position. Okay. But you, I'll, I'll ask you a certain Very question, well. though. But at the end of the day, from what I pick from what you're saying is, even if, he, ha he goes to court, and there's a scenario painted that he has a case. And the current status quo is reverted in terms of the decision that has been taken. You're saying morally he's lost ground. Yeah, the people don't want to deal with him at that level. Yeah, the rank and file. The, uh, is well, it the rank and file? Now there's no empirical Rankin evidence to sure. talk about rank and file, but at the top level, the national council. That's his like, peers that he'll be dealing with. Yes, yes. Regional chairman, blah, blah, blah. Who are all members blah, 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 of the council. Blah, blah. For which he needs to have a working relationship. Okay. Cordial working relationship with. So even then, how do we manage it if you should come back? So you may come back and win and just win and become simpapeni. So it's important to show that winning will not give the exact result the party will want. So, so, so what should be done? To me, the friends of my friends are my friends. There are people who are closer to Afoko, who may have some slight influence on him. Let's look for all those people and get hot in the room, alone, with a group very well respected. Unfortunately, some of those last of others can turn out to get into the mud too much. They should just keep quiet because it's a running issue. And then get him. I'm sure when he backs down the issues. Uh, what about the other side that he has a disagreement with? That's the entire party. Well, the leadership. Well, you know, you've heard about let's agree to disagree. Right. You've heard it before. At a point, that should be. How, how is this a difficult situation for the National Council? You see. You, because you've you, taken you, a certain you, decision. You a take decision? the National Council. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. I mean, some senior, very, very, have called. At times, they, uh, my permission is that they've sat down to about 3 a.m. From 9 p.m. to about. Do but you want to destroy the man's political career. So you know, what, what do you want him to do? What do you expect him to do? Unfortunately, those hey. people have had their fingers burned because things that were done behind closed doors at the end of the day were out. And we all heard it, that certain top uh, religious leaders were, were even brought in, not because we were party members, but just that they could... Maybe the other group leaked it. It's normal. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. So we, it doesn't matter who. So it means that... The minister will say oh, we should bring some, and I'm saying that you shouldn't tried that. blame. Yes, I mean, I'll so, bring, so the decision uh, is fine. Now. But, but no, so I don't know who else. I but, mean, but, for but me, brother, these are not normal times. You know, everybody talks from history. You know, Afoko's history in 2007. You know what happened to him. 
He knew the wrong announcement that was made by somebody who was not qualified to make the announcement, who also belonged to somebody who was competing and the result that action he received. It has carried on through the Chamati business. So there's a certain history. History up to the veteran of Afoko. When there was a complaint, the owners of Cruz will lie. They said one, he was a British. Uh, and that, two, he, had, he then, hadn't renounced his nationality. Then that, he had no, traded no, no, in, no, no, no. in drugs. The, the serious drugs. one was the drug yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah. And it was For which brought in Interpol. Uh, but I thought that one, the owner should have been on the accuser. But they had to delay it and bring in Interpol and things like that. So, and the process even up to the elections, you remember, he had to even stand by the ballot box and say some directors at the uh, head of the don't have right to vote, holding his constitution. It came and it came back after the elections and they started doing some racial policy, if you like. That also brought its own problem. So the history is long and wide. The solution will not be easy. Okay. It could be 3 a.m., good, but that effort should be continuous. I would think so. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me this morning. I've enjoyed all the, the subjects of discussion this morning, and I have to say thank you. And uh, we have had in the studio James Apietuankra, a regular, uh, at least each week, uh, on this very show. And he's a former member of parliament for Lower West Achim. And also John Alexander Akon is uh, the parliamentary candidate for Obuasi West, but the deputy minister for gender uh, children and social protection. Thanks for joining me. You're welcome. All right. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll have entertainment and Becky will be here.